<clears throat> All right, welcome back to Fabrication 101. Uh, thank you so much for joining me in the shop today. Uh, you'll notice the camper's still on its frame, uh, and that's because I decided uh, that I think I'm going to work on these doors that are going to go in here uh, while it's on the frame just to make sure everything's going to stay where it's where it needs to be, I guess. I don't know. It just seemed, in my brain, it made sense to do it while it's here. Um, so we'll get these doors built. Uh, then we'll get it off, uh, finish up the welding, paint it, and then maybe look at putting it on the trailer. Um, I don't know. I've got a friend who might need to use that trailer for a little bit, so um, I'm kind of waiting. I'm, I'm not really ready to do it yet anyway. So anyway, we got some material to go pick up. Uh, so let's go get that, and then we'll uh, be right back. All right, materials in, uh, offloaded. The plan here is, is relatively simple. Uh, I bought some uh, one inch square tube, 16 gauge, um, and then I bought some 16 gauge sheet. Uh, I'm just gonna build some simple square frames, maybe put a, a diagonal brace in them, uh, and then they're gonna go in each one of these spaces, and I got some nice, fairly heavy duty, like big piano hinge uh, that I'll use to hinge the material, and then hopefully, uh, my latches will show up before I'm ready, before I'm waiting for them, uh, and we will get them put together. Should be fairly straightforward. I really kind of wanted to do this out of aluminum, but the cost difference is kind of surprising me. Uh, I knew that aluminum was more expensive. Um, if I was going to do this out of aluminum, it would have been a, a more than a thousand dollars more than what I paid for this steel. Uh, so I'm going to go with steel on this. Uh, I'll probably end up TIG welding all this stuff just because it's, it's fairly thin, 16 gauge material. Um, and I don't want to deal with blown holes through things so I can TIG weld it up fairly nicely. Give me an excuse to practice my TIG welding again. So, uh, without dragging this out any longer, let's get to work. Let's go build something. Uh, first we're going to do some, uh, measuring, lots of measuring, try to get it as, as accurate as we can, uh, figure out how wide my piano hinge is going to be, which looks like when it's flat, it's about a quarter of an inch. Um, so we'll measure that out. I think what I'm going to try to do is have the same space all the way around the doors, which on the square doors is not that much of a challenge. Uh, on this one with the curved corner, uh, it's going to be a bit more of a challenge. So I said, I'm going to try to match this radius. I thought about just going down and then putting a plate there. Uh, but I think I can match that radius, very similar to the way I did the, the fender flares on the Bronco. So anyway, let's get to work. Let's go build something. All right, so like I said, we started out by taking some measurements. Uh, I draw myself a little kind of rough square shape of the what I'm taking dimensions on. Um, try to take them as accu accurately as I can with a, a beat up old uh, tape measure that only goes down to 16. Surprisingly, this was pretty square. Uh, even though I didn't really check it when I welded those things in there. So I'm going to start cutting some material on the, the old bandsaw here. Uh, this thing, for as old and as beat up and mis misused as it has been, uh, actually cuts pretty, pretty dang square. Uh, I do cut every piece uh, a little bit long, maybe about a sixteenth of an inch long, so it's at like a thirty-second on either end. Uh, and then I like to, what I like to do is set up uh, a miter gauge or whatever you want to call it on my uh, big 24 inch disc sander 
uh, and then really, really fine tune those corners uh, so that these miter cuts fit really nice and tight. Uh, it does make the, the welding go a little bit nicer. Uh, unfortunately, I guess I forgot to record some of that. I think it's in some of one of the other videos, maybe. Um, but it does work really well to do that with that old disc sander. Uh, like I said, it makes those corners fit really nice. Uh, these um, squares from Fireball Tool are game changers. Uh, I love these things. They work so great. I do need to get another set. Um, I have a, a bigger set and a smaller set. I'd like to get a couple more of these smaller ones. Uh, for doing these smaller jobs. Uh, it would be nice at some point uh, in my fabrication life to uh, get myself a little bit more of a fixture table. I'm kind of considering drilling this table out, but it's not that flat. This is just a sheet of half inch plate. Uh, I built this table probably close to 20 years ago now. Um, and it sat out in one of my other buildings for a long time, just collecting dust and rust. Uh, but now I'm, I'm getting to use it a lot more. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit more eventually, but. Uh, I'm still debating on whether I want to take the time to uh, drill this thing out. All right, this door is done, or not done, but at least tacked together. Um, it went pretty easy, but again, this was the easy one to do. The hinge uh, measured about 3 16 of an inch. Uh, so that's what I shot for was like a 3, three 16 gap all the way around, pretty close. Um, it does get a little tight here, a little more there. So I can tweak it a little bit to try to get it to fit a little bit better. Uh, but so far I'm pretty pleased with this one. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and finish tacking it and get it welded out uh, I'm not gonna do the sheet yet because I want to wait till all the other ones are ready for that uh, But I'm gonna go ahead and start working on that one, which is gonna be a little bit more of a challenge, but All right, we're gonna start with this one. I kind of try to mark it out um, Try to match the radius that piece of cardboard. I've been using through the whole project. It's the same radius should get me in the ballpark or at least pretty close. Uh, so I'm marking this one out. This was this one actually is a test piece uh, that I didn't end up using this one. The uh, cuts were way too close together, way more than I needed. Uh, I think this one I was doing it a quarter of an inch space, which is what I did on the uh, tube flares on the on the Bronco. Uh, but those were matching like a five and a half inch radius, or maybe even a four and a half inch radius. Uh, whereas this is more like a, a six or six and a half inch radius. So you can see I've got it all cut out. Um, again, I just used the cutoff wheel. I think on the, the second side, I ended up uh, using the bandsaw to cut them and then cleaned them up with the cutoff wheel. It came up a little bit quicker and a little bit nicer. Uh, I did end up, you can see the one, I, the second one I cut there on the table. Uh, ended up going with every half inch instead of every quarter inch, uh, which gave me half as many cuts, which is probably a good thing. Uh, but it got it all laid out, framed up, tacked together. Um, pretty happy with the way this one came out. Uh, it did take me a while uh, to get everything lined up, but in the end, I'm pretty happy with it. All right. The second one on this side is done. I got, I'm not going to lie. This, this made me work. This was a hassle. Uh, not necessarily doing that bend, but getting everything pretty close to lined up. It's not too bad. Uh, it's good enough for what I want. Okay. Uh, gaps are look on pretty good, although that one for some reason keeps opening up on me Right here. It closes up and then opens So anyway, uh, I'm pretty happy with that uh, Next thing's gonna be to finish weld this one out um, And then start working on I think the sheet metal I think for this side uh, But it's pretty much done for the day or I'm done for the day uh, And we will pick this back up tomorrow All right uh, got out here early this morning, well, not super early, and started doing all this welding. Uh, that panel's all welded up. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of grinding. I'm not going to completely metal finish these things. Uh, and then we're going to start working on the, the sheeting to cover the side. Um, and then i got to figure out how I want to do the hinges. I'm not sure if I want to weld them in, or rivet, or bolt, or screw, or something. Uh, I can't, can't decide if I want to keep them removable. Uh, or put them in there permanently. I don't know if it'll make much difference in the long run, uh, but I'll figure that out when I get to that point. So a uh, little bit of grinding, uh, and then we're going to start cutting some sheet metal, which should be interesting because my plasma cutter is dead. So we'll figure that out again. Another thing, to, another bridge to cross when we get there. All right, came time to make these cuts. I decided to try and use my trusty old circular saw. Uh, this is actually the same saw, same blade that I used to do the 
uh, diff shave on the rear axle in the Bronco, and I'm, I'm really pleased with the way this worked, and I may uh, do this quite a bit more because it worked really well, really nicely uh, with using that uh, straight edge there. It made very nice straight cuts. And you can see I had to trim off just a little bit here. Probably should have clamped uh, the piece of material to the table so it didn't move on me, but everything came out okay. Um, so I laid out all my tack welds. Um, I try to make them about an inch, or not the tack welds, but I was going to do an inch welds. What I like to do is put tack welds where I want to stop. Uh, and I think I've said this before in other videos that uh, it's much easier to see the tack weld than it is to see like a sharpie mark or a piece of soapstone or a, or a, a graphite pencil or whatever silver streak that you use to mark things out. So it's a lot easier to see those tack welds. Uh, I was able to, for the most part, tack without having to use filler metal. Uh, do little, what some people call blast tacks. Um, and I thought, since it tacked so nicely, I was going to be able to weld it without filler, do some autogenous welding on the edges here. Uh, and I tried quite a few. I tried some pulse settings. Uh, and in the end, I just wasn't really happy with the way things are coming out. Uh, so I did weld them, uh, for the most part, with filler. Uh, I just cleaned that one up a little bit, cleaned another one up a little bit with some filler. I didn't, wasn't really happy with the way it was coming out, but I kept trying it. Because uh, if it doesn't work the first time, try it again. Uh, and maybe things are changed. That's not how it works, and I, I really shouldn't try to do this stuff. But uh, sometimes it's just the way I want to try to do things, see what happens, and see if I can make some changes and adjustments. But uh, in the end, I did end up using filler for most of the welds. Um, it just came out a little bit nicer, a little bit... Uh, when you can dab and stack those little dimes in there, it comes out looking a lot nicer. So uh, I did stitch weld this thing. Like I said, every one inch welds, every five or six inches or so. Uh, tried to keep the heat um, from saturating this, this sheet metal and warping it too badly. Uh, it's going to warp a little bit, but uh, it shouldn't be so bad that I, I you know, it kind of messes up the panel. But um, hopefully everything comes out pretty good. Well, not hopefully. Everything came out pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with the way it came out. Uh, and in the end, it worked out just like I hoped it would. Alright, well, first door is pretty much done. I'm going to probably flip it over and do a few tack welds on the inside. Uh, just to keep the panel from rattling on the crossbar. Um, I went ahead and just stitched weld it together. Um, you know, a couple every, you know, I think this side's about six and a half inches and this side's like five and a half inches. Uh, just to kind of lay them out as evenly as I could. Uh, I really didn't want to over weld this or take the time to weld it completely. I don't think it needs it. Uh, plus, I didn't really didn't want to run the risk of warping my sheet metal here, so... Uh, like I said, I will put the couple of crossbars, tack welds down the, the crossbar on the inside. Hopefully I can do that without burning through and making a mess of things. Uh, but that one's done. Mostly, uh, once once I get the couple weld, more welds put in there, I'm going to start to work on the other one. That's sitting right there on the floor. Alright, here we are with doing the second door. This is just a little bit of lather, rinse, and repeat as necessary. Uh, laying out my, my stopping points for my tack welds. Uh, again, just doing some one-inch stitch welds all along these edges, uh, just because I didn't think it needed to be fully welded. Uh, if you look at this corner closest to the front, um, you can kind of see I missed the mark on my uh, edge there. I think it actually moved on me while I was laying things out, and I didn't realize it. Um, this good brings back the old, you know, measure twice, cut once, so you don't have to have weird gaps like that. Uh, in the end, I don't think it mattered that much, so I just went ahead and went with it. I'm not super concerned about it. So again, laying out these welds, um, just stitching them out with some uh, 1/16th uh, ER70S2 filler. If you're wondering, um, this little prime tig is a workhorse. I really like the way it welds. Uh, I'm super happy with it. Um, it does have a couple weird little issues. I'm not the biggest fan of the foot pedal, uh, but I do know they make a different one now. Uh, I think this was one of the early machines when they first started making them. Um, because the, all, the, all the ones I see now are different, have different displays on them, actually have numbers on them where mine just has symbols. Uh, but again, it still works great. Uh, it does everything that I need it to do. Probably pl probably more than I really need it to do, so I'm pretty happy with it.
All right, the rear door, rear door, driver's side rear door, that's what that's gonna be, um, is all pretty much done, all welded anyway. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and put my latch in. I got these, I think they're pretty cool. I like these kind of latches. They are lockable and they're the kind that just pop up and you can open. A nice little flush mount should look pretty good on there. Uh, and then I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the hinge on. I think I decided to go ahead and just uh, do a series of spot welds uh, instead of rivets or screws. Uh, if it has to come off, then it has to come off. I guess I'll figure that out. Another another bridge to cross when I get there. Anyway, we'll get this uh, hinge light or hinge, get the latch laid out on this door, and then we'll do the other door, and then we'll get the hinges put on, and then we'll probably go ahead and put them on the the frame. So let's uh, so let's get to do some more building. All right, got my uh, hole for the latch kind of marked out as best I could. I uh, went ahead and center punched these holes so I could get some uh, rounded corners. Uh, the latch is going to cover them up, so it's not super critical that these be perfect. Uh, but having a nice rounded corner uh, reduces the risk of things cracking in the future. Um, Use the old body saw here to uh, cut these out. Worked really well. Um, it is kind of a little bit of a challenge at times, but uh, this is probably one of the better tools to do this little job. Uh, yeah, you could get in there with a cutoff wheel or uh, maybe a plasma cutter if I had a working plasma cutter, but uh, in the end, this little body saw uh, does the job pretty quickly and, and comes out pretty nice. A little, little cleanup, little trimming there, uh, and the latch pops right in, fits exactly where it's supposed to, except I put it in backwards the first time, uh, but everything came out pretty much the way I was hoping. Good morning. It's a new day out here in the shop. We're still working on our camper here, uh, but as you can see, I got both doors in. I got a little carried away last night. Um, didn't really film much. I started to film. I think I did the last uh, cutting this hole, uh, but I didn't film any of the hinges. I decided to go ahead and screw these in uh, because I think I'm gonna wanna take these off at some point, maybe when I'm putting it on the trailer or when I'm painting things, uh, just to make it look a little bit nicer. But anyway, um, the doors work good. Um, they are a little heavier than I wanted them to be, to be honest, uh, but they both swing and move pretty freely. Probably gonna end up putting some sort of a stop on there so they don't um, swing all the way out and bang into each other um, or fully swing all the way around or anything like that. But, uh, this door here, um, you can see how I did the screws in here. They're all nicely spaced out. Uh, should be plenty of them in there. Uh, to hold that door in place. Uh, the next thing I need to do is uh, put some sort of a stop behind right here um, that will also serve as a place for the latch to hook onto. It should be pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, so we'll get that done on both doors. Uh, and then I think, I think that means this side is done. And all I gotta do is the other side, which should go a little quicker. Uh, because now I have a plan and kind of just follow the plan, but it's still going to be a bit of work. So uh, enough chattering. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, finish building something. All right, they're both pretty much done. I don't think there's too much, too many other little things to do. Um, this can be done, can be adjusted right there a little bit, I think. But they latch into place, they could be locked. Uh, pretty pleased with the way those came out. That one's sticking out a little bit, but probably could go ahead and bend that tab a little bit. But pretty pleased. Pretty pleased. Um, so anyway, uh, those this side is not done, but more done. Um, I still have to do all the welding on this side, not on the doors, but on the frame. Uh, but again, that's going to wait till it comes off. Um, here's my a dilemma question. I'm not sure. Uh, when I, I'm going to paint this. Uh, I wish I could get it powder coated, but I think that's a little bit out of my price range for this kind of project. But anyway, I'm debating whether I should paint everything black or if I should try and find a, a gray that matches the gooseneck to paint everything on the outside. I found one that's really, really close. Uh, it's a little bit lighter. I don't know that it would make that much difference. It'd probably fade out in the sun and get even lighter, but um, it might be okay. But 
Let me know what you think. Should I go with a gray or should I paint it black or should I do something crazy and go completely different? Anyway, uh, we'll pick back up. I'm going to go ahead and knock out the other side. Uh, probably not going to film much of that unless I run into some kind of weird issue uh, that I want to show you guys. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the other side knocked out as quick as I can and then we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. It's a new day in the shop. It's actually been a couple of days and that's given me time to complete the other two doors on this side of the rig. Um, the next steps, um, I think, uh, unless I find something different, I'm going to pull the doors back off because um, I need to get up into some of these corners to do some welding anyway. Um, and I just don't need to have them on there right now. Uh, so I'm going to pull them back off uh, both sides, uh, get the frame out from underneath the camper, uh, get it out so I can finish weld it. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and add in uh, some sheet metal here to close this in. Uh, this part, I don't know that it needs it, but I'm going to go ahead and close it in anyway. I think it might just be revealed by the, the header part of the trailer. Um, so we're going to cover that up. Uh, once we get all the welding done, get those pieces put back in, um, it's going to be time for paint, I think. Um, so we'll pick it back up there uh, once I get to that point. All right, frame is out, as you can see, and it's actually all welded up uh, and cleaned or ground, smooth, blended, all that stuff. Um, and now I got to go through and really clean it uh, before I can do some painting. I'm going to primer it first. Uh, I still haven't 100% decided if I'm going to paint the outside part to match the trailer or what I'm going to do with that. I don't know. I haven't decided. There isn't really a good match for just rattle can spray paint so if i really want it to match which if i'm going to match it i'm going to match it um, i'm either going to have to get some paint mixed or figure out another solution maybe powder coat i don't know no nah, probably not a powder coat um, but anyway uh, i'll get it all cleaned up wiped down primered um, and probably just going to go ahead and paint the inside part of it black um, and then i'll decide what i want to do i did find another uh, one other color of dark gray at the store. Uh, I'm gonna do a test spray on that, see how close it is. Uh, and then if that doesn't work, I may go to the local paint supply place and see what it'll cost to get some gray mixed up that matches. Um, Cause it's not gonna be very much uh, to spray it. Uh, and I think that'll look the best, but I still haven't decided yet. So anyway, this is maybe kind of boring stuff for, to, for you to watch. Um, so we're gonna take care of it uh, and we'll be back in a few minutes for for you guys, well, a few seconds. Uh, might be another day or two for me, so we'll see you in a minute. All right, folks, here we are. This phase of the crawler hauler build is pretty much done. Uh, doors on both sides are all done. They're latches, they're painted. Um, I think I, they came out really good, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I do wanna put some sort of stop in here so this door can't uh, swing all the way open and bang into the other door, um, which, I foresee happening at least once if I don't ever do that. So uh, we'll get that. That'll be one of the little things we do. Uh, adjust that door just a little bit. There it goes. Uh, anyway, I went with uh, kind of a satin dark gray. Um, I can order the paint to match the trailer, but it was going to take like a month to get here. And I had to order like twice as much as I was really needing. 
Uh, so I just went with a dark satin gray. I decided to go black around the edges, uh, thinking that if the gray was not right next to the other gray on the trailer, uh, the difference wouldn't be quite as noticeable. I'm sure you'll still notice. Uh, but so far, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, it is a rattle can paint job, rattle can paint job, spray paint cans. Uh, so it's not perfect. There's some, a little bit of striping in there, um, but I'm pretty happy with it for what it is. So anyway, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Fabrication 101 and do it for this project for a little bit. I got some other things I want to work on, uh, and I'm kind of getting burned out on this thing. There's still a lot left to do on it. Um, but the big job right now is, is for the big job for now is done. Um, and I think we're going to be jumping back on that thing for a little bit. So anyway, again, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Fabrication 101. I appreciate it. Uh, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you guys on the next episode of Fabrication 101. In the meantime, do yourself a favor, do me a favor, and go build something.